the power of God, I, I don't know, but there are people God is raising to become mighty vessels. I just saw an anointing rest on you, this role. In the name of Jesus, I don't know where you are, but I pray may that grace now, let it rest upon you and shift you to a new dimension. In the name of Jesus Christ. Welcome to Christocentric Message. On this channel, you are going to get soul-lifting messages, faith-based content, prayer drills, and videos that would help you grow spiritually. Remember to subscribe to the channel, like the video you are about to watch, and comment on it. Stay blessed. In the name of Jesus, let there be the hearing of faith. Let there be the working of miracles. May your word come, O oh God, like fire from heaven. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. God bless you. Please be seated, everyone. Hallelujah. It's my joy again to be around with us. Um, we're still going to pray tonight. And I trust that God will help us. First John chapter 2. First John chapter 2. I begin my reading from verse 12. Let me start um, to just encourage our hearts. First John chapter 2 verse 12. I write to you little children because your sins are forgiven you for his name's sake. 13. I write unto you fathers because ye have known him that is from the beginning. I write to you young men. Now listen. Because you have overcome the wicked one. I write to you little children because you have known the father. 14. I have written to you fathers because ye have known him that is from the beginning. I have written to you young men because you are strong and the word of God abided in you and you have overcome the wicked one. Grant us understanding even by the spirit. Build our hearts, O oh God, in the name of Jesus Christ. When scripture is talking to the young, it talks about two advantages that they have. Number one is that they are strong. Number two is that the word of God abiding in them has given them the ability to overcome a personality that the Bible calls the wicked one. Please listen. When he writes to the fathers, he describes that your advantage is your knowledge. There is something you have known about God from the beginning. When he writes to the young men, he says your advantage as young people is that you have strength. And then that his word abides in you. And on account of that abiding word, that you have the power to overcome the wicked. It is very important when the Bible is, is teaching us, it's important that we focus on the context of what it is saying. Knowledge for the fathers, strength and the grace to fight is the advantage of young people. Are we together now? First John chapter 5 verse 4. Apostle John is still teaching. And he's teaching the believer that the life of a believer is not only a life of victory, but a life of warfare. Verse 4. For whatsoever, not whosoever, is born of God, overcome it. He's still talking of overcoming. Listen, please. Young men, strength and the grace to fight. And he's saying whatsoever is born of God, overcomes this system and this is the victory 
that overcomes. There is victory that does not overcome. There is victory that calls for celebration. But here he's talking about a kind of victory that demonstrates that you are victorious by the experience of your overcoming this system. And he says, even our faith. Listen very carefully. He didn't say this faith produces that victory. He says the faith is the victory. Are we together now? You have to understand this. This is, for many years I thought he's just talking of faith. You will learn something powerful tonight. That there is something called the faith that overcomes. That if a believer possesses that, the proof is that you will be able to rise above this system. And the Bible calls that faith. It does not say the faith produces victory. Uh -uh. That faith is victory itself. Are we together? Mm. Ephesians chapter 6 and verse 16. It starts by saying above all, above every spiritual equipping you have been given. Now remember that in the book of Ephesians, he's teaching the believer how to sit, a revelation of your position in Christ. Then he teaches how to walk, your walk of faith. Now he's teaching you how to stand against something he calls the wiles of the enemy. And he's saying that above all, that you can take a shield a shield i did a little of that during the prayer and fasting i don't know if it was this year or last year a shield of faith and then it says wherewith with that shield you shall have an ability you don't have that ability until that shield is there that when the shield comes you will be able to quench how many all the fiery darts of the wicked the same wicked one john is talking about so we know that when it has to do with warfare, Satan is revealed as a wicked man. Wickedness, that the whole world lied in wickedness. That is the character. Please listen. And then the Bible says that you can hold the shield of faith. And that with that faith you can quench all, not some, the fiery darts. I write to you young men. Don't forget what we are dealing with because you are strong. I write to you young men because you have an ability to fight and overcome. Are we together now? First Corinthians chapter 16 and verse 9. We'll touch on four scriptures and then I'll begin to teach. Paul is teaching here and he's saying for a great door he's teaching the church in Corinth and an effectual is opened unto me so he's talking about open doors are we together now dimensions access a great door an effectual is opened unto me he said but there are many adversaries a door of opportunity a door of growth a door of grace but he's saying he's teaching us something here that the moment you see doors opening don't celebrate prepare to fight that a great door is open unto me but that the moment a door begins to be opened he's teaching you that you should not be carried away by that door that is open the moment you see doors opening know that there are many adversaries and so young men get set when you see doors open take up your shield of faith because there is the wicked one are you are you getting what i'm teaching you now yes that for every door that is opened and effectual that means you can see the presence of the evil one to validate whether it was God that opened that door. And that you are prepared to fight with this shield of faith. Please understand, I teach you a deep mystery that you will need for your spiritual life. A great door and an effectual is open. 
but many are the adversaries but the bible says you can take hold the shield of faith and you will be able to quench the fiery darts now listen it matters that we understand how we grow in the kingdom it matters listen please that we understand how we transit in the kingdom it matters that we understand how victory is wrought for the saints because for many believers we are aware of promises but we have not been mentored into the dynamics of walking into the experience of the life the power the grace of the kingdom and so while we are inspired by an expected end many times we are ignorant of the things that happen between Egypt and Canaan are you getting what I'm saying now so it is true that we fix our eyes on the end but we are never really taught to understand the many things the vicissitudes that we will face on the way and lack of listen lack of that understanding and do many things to our experience including not allowing us to arrive at the end spiritual maturity is not just the ability to be in church in fact it's not just the ability to read your bible to be equipped remember when he talks about fathers their advantage is knowledge you are fathers because you have an advantage of knowledge so when he talks about fathers he says you have knowledge there is something that you know when he talks about young men he says young men you are about to know something you do not yet know it but in your fight what you need now is the strength and the stamina to fight so that when you become fathers you will also be able to guide the young are you getting what I'm saying now fathers you have this knowledge because you fought and that experience taught you something about God that has become an advantage and a security for you young men you are your advantage is that you are emotion there is strength but there are many things you are going to know and then he says guard you with strength and stand in faith because a door is open towards you but there are many adversaries and you must understand the spiritual technology by which men fight until they grow to become fathers listen very carefully to what I'm about to teach you it's a very powerful mystery many believers are not trained to understand the things of the spirit and how to navigate the enemy please hear me this life is a combination of victories that appear when we fight a good fight of faith now I believe in the grace message don't get me wrong I believe in all of these dimensions of the kingdom but there is something about destiny that I want us to respect tonight that destiny is a threat to Satan the very the very picture of destiny your fulfilling your destiny is the assurance that Satan's doom is imminent and so when Satan sees a man and a people with a destiny they become the center of his interest now many believers don't know this we have all kinds of wise sayings don't trouble me I don't trouble you and all of that and we have sometimes this false indoctrination that the only way you give Satan the only way Satan comes to you is when you look for his trouble you are joking go and read your Bible well the, there is something the moment you carry that thing calls Satan till you leave the earth please understand what I'm teaching you when there is prophecy upon your head when there is grace upon your life when there is a word upon your mouth 
when there is an interest upon your life satan is interested in you and let me tell you there is one thing about satan he has an undying interest he wants everything god wants and if that thing is you then listen to this message Koinonia is quiet. <laughs> the proposition that many believers have that you just know God, love God, worship God, engage principles here and there, you know, just speak the word here and there, and just cut walk into a glorious destiny is a joke. I hate to be the bearer of bad news, but it's a joke. If it is destiny in Christ, if it's a life of victory, then please understand what I tell you, that there is faith that overcomes. Follow me as I teach. I have discovered that Satan's assignment, listen carefully, Satan's assignment is never to fight your faith. I used to think Satan was after our faith. I found out that's wrong. Satan is not after your faith. Satan is after the information upon which your faith was built. Now, please understand what I'm teaching you. Satan is not interested in your faith. Satan is interested in information, words. Because that is the basis upon which faith is built. Please understand this. <clears throat> There is no basis for faith until it is built on a word or the word as the case may be. Are we together? If I tell Pastor Alpha or Pastor Femi or Kenny or anybody, I say, come. I have called them. I have sent a word. They can place their faith upon it now. You see that? So what you really attack is not their obedience what you attack is the information if i tell pastor alpha come pastor femi come and they hear another voice that says go now that is an attack on information because in either ways it is going to necessitate action please listen to what i'm teaching you Many believers get to a point in their Christian experience where they have access to spiritual information that many times begins to corrupt the pace of their work with God. There are many believers who the challenge in their life is information dependent Satan just comes in to plant another information please hear what I teach you we're going to go to Genesis and you see what happened to Adam and Eve I, I thought Satan was after faith action no he's after information Hezekiah heard just one information from a prophet and Hezekiah's whole life went down. If prophet Isaiah never reached Hezekiah, he probably would be able to, maybe he would have died still. But just that information, one information. The apostles of the Lamb were walking with Jesus and they had one information, I'm about to die, I'm going and I'm leaving you. And that changed everything. Jesus, where are you going? A dead body had one information and came back to life. Wine was finished. One information was introduced. And the next thing, water was turned to wine. Listen to me. This is a kingdom where we reign. And this is a kingdom where Satan operates. And this is also a kingdom where God operates by the power of spiritual information. In fact, information generally. Whether spiritual, whether intellectual, whether psychological. 
Our fight, therefore, in this kingdom is not necessarily a fight against spirits alone. It's not necessarily a fight against antichrist systems alone. The greatest warfare of a believer, listen to me, will be the warfare of words, the warfare of information. One information comes into your life or a series of information and it turns an ordinary student to become a doctor, to become an engineer, to become whatever it is, information. One information in a business seminar suddenly turns someone who has no hope of prospering. He receives that information and that information turns his life around. Have you been taught that in this kingdom, the maker and the breaker of men is information? There is what we call IT today. It's called information technology. Information is so powerful that technology was built around it. People have become multi-millionaires because they have mastered the art of disseminating information. They have created platforms around the world that connect people and supply information and they have prospered through it. Information is so powerful that when God is about to come and give Daniel an information, he doesn't just speak from heaven, he sends an angel with it to come. That's how much he places value on information. When Mary is about to receive Jesus, Jesus coming to her like that, she would not receive him. An angel had to come. Before the journey of Jesus started, she supplied an information. And Mary said, be it unto me. Hmm. Genesis chapter 3. Now the serpent was more subtle than any of the beasts of the field which the Lord has made. Verse 2. And he said, notice now, we call this the fall of man, theologically speaking of, you know, Adam and Eve now falling from that height and being banished out of the Eden of God. And remember, the entire story started with words. Satan comes to the woman, to the serpent, and says, what did God say? Please go back to verse 1. I want to find out. All I am after is what information are you standing upon? Because the information is creating an effect in this garden. And that effect is creating is not giving me allowance. So for me to thwart the purposes of God, I want to find out. So I'm on a research. What did God tell you? And the woman said, well, verse 2. God said we may eat. So God gave us access to the fruit of the trees of the garden. Verse 3. But of the fruit, aha, uh -huh, Satan's attention is coming now. He says, this and that and that, you shall not eat, neither shall you touch it. And then he said, what is the consequence? That if you touch it, you shall die. So an information tied to life and an information tied to death. Are you getting what I'm saying now? And then Satan does not say, man, leave the garden. Satan does not say, man, I command you to die. In fact, Satan does not say, man, stop having faith. He says, man, give me your attention. Next verse. The serpent said, ye shall not die. Do you know what he's doing? He did not touch their faith. He's redirecting where the faith is based upon now. They still need faith to believe this. Are you getting what I'm saying now? And the only thing he came was to withdraw nicely the information upon which their victory in the garden was predicated upon. And he shifted it and supplied another information. 
and they absorb that information verse 5 it says for God knows for God knows I write to you fathers any father including God that the advantage in fatherhood is knowledge for God knows that the day you eat thereof your eyes will be opened and then you shall be as gods knowing good and evil verse 6 now he said when the woman saw notice what the information started doing the information was like a drug we are not aware that he touched her he just supplied an information the first thing the information changed was perception the eyes the eyes started coming under the influence of that information and then number two an appetite started coming out that was not there now look at how words are powerful you will now know why god is called the word of god the compendium of the thoughts of god this is how satan sent man out of eden is it not amazing that he never used a sword my brothers and my sisters the greatest battles are not fought with knives the greatest battles are not fought with blood and arrows and guns the greatest battles is the energizings that information does to people and the bible says here that when she saw that it was pleasant and good for food the bible says she partook of it ate that information compelled action he never touched her but he made something that had entered her spirit and her mind to compel action and then the bible says that she gave unto her husband who was there and he did it next verse and the eyes of them both were open and they knew that they were naked and they sued fig trees the long and short is he banished them out of the garden this is the first official record in the bible of man becoming a victim of satan this is the first if official record of the warfare between man and satan and satan won so it means that we have to go back and study what weapon he used and he used the weapon of words weapons of information are we together now yes there is another way of doing ministry that can produce great results that information comes i can put something in your pocket and suddenly the power of god will multiply you were moving in innocence but an information came i will tell you something about informations i just needed to know that the real warfare of a believer is a battle of information satan wants your mind because your your destiny is not just god dependent it's also dependent on the information that runs you your faith cannot be based on nothing and whatever something it is that is the pillar of your confidence of your results that's what satan wants please listen to me the information upon which your faith is built that is his concern satan is not interested in your faith as it were he's interested because faith is simply conviction on an information and the corresponding action you take to demonstrate that you are convicted that's it so if i tell tosin i say tosin go and collect that handkerchief from this gentleman now faith can come because i have released a word is that true yes that word will stop him from doing what he was doing before and compel him now to act so when you see him move you call it faith but faith would never have been there except that an information came now assuming he's on his way going and i now stop him and give him another word i say don't worry go back what did i do i turned his whole life around using information listen to what i teach you there is power in this will you open up the gate open up the door
Will you open up the case? for the gates of life to be open. Will you open up the gate? Open up the door. I want to show you why information is power, both in the realm of the spirit and in this realm. I want to show you why words are so powerful. God protects it with his name and calls himself the word of God. God does not call himself um, the hand of God as it were. He names himself after information. If God names himself after information, that information created the heavens and the earth. Something was said and suddenly made bones that were hiding to come out. Something was said that made bones that were dead to come back to life. Something was said that made fishermen to not be interested in fishing again. I can stop whatever you are doing now, not by fighting you. I only need to introduce something to you. I can move your life by information. I can stop your life by information. I can help you to be anointed by information. And I can destroy you by information. No wonder the founders of some of the great conglomerates around the world today. Their product, the advantage is the vast access they have to information. Google, Facebook, they are a threat today to national security and the simple advantage is because they develop a psychological platform that compel the world to grant them access to information to the point that the US government has to call them. There are several cult groups today and everything that is discussed in those cult groups are privy information. Are we together now? Let me share with you the technology of words. I want to show you, that's not the topic for tonight. I want to show you why words are powerful. I want to show you why information is powerful. So that you will understand that every time a word goes before you, it's not just a time to jump. It's a time to begin to prepare. Because Satan is coming after that information. This charge I give unto you, my son Timothy, that you wore a good warfare. I've sent you with our information. I've done my best. Timothy, hold that information and fight until you win. Let me tell you why words are powerful. Second Kings. I mean, not Second Kings. Ezekiel chapter 2. I sense a strong anointing in this place. Look up, please. And he said unto me, Son of man, stand up on thy feet, and I will speak unto you. Verse 2. And the Spirit entered me. Wow. When he spake unto me, and that Spirit, the words just stop at my ear, and the Spirit continued. The spirit started making my body to start acting in consonance with what was said. Now listen please. That he wanted me to move from where I was to another place. And he simply sent a word. And when that word got to the gate of my ears, it was not, it, it had finished his work like a train. Every other thing that entered me was no longer sound, it was spirit. And that when it entered me, like a drug reacting to a patient, have you swallowed a drug before? And then you stand and the contraindications begin to work on you. You start to feel drowsy and you are wondering. Remember, you didn't ask the drug whether you wanted to be drowsy or not. It entered you and started reconfiguring you. I know your action 
by what you have received. I look at your destiny and I can, I can trace your victory or your problem to the presence of information. What did God tell you? Your victory cannot be automatic. So if what did God tell you in your conversation with him? Because in Genesis, when you read Genesis chapter 2, it says, now the Lord came. The Hebrew word is the talking spirit. The spirit that speaks. The spirit that lives by speaking. The spirit that changes a man's life by speaking. Now listen. So for every word that is spoken, there is a spirit. The word spirit there does not just mean the Holy Spirit. It means there is an energizing. Words and information carry energy. They create a climate that compel action. This is where religion and science both agree. That words are powerful. They are shapers of perception. They are initiators of action words I write to you young men because you are strong and the word of God abides in you your strength is based on something you have heard and your victory is predicated upon a, a spiritual information supply there is a medical condition called brain damage there is also another medical condition called loss of memory. It happens a lot with old people. It's a state where because of whatever biological challenges, you no longer have the retention power. You can forget your wife, your husband. And medical people agree that it's a dangerous state for a man to be in. There are people, watch this. Who all of a sudden, especially the elderly, after 60, 70 years of living on earth, it could even be a pilot, it could even be a professor, just two months, something affects the bank of information and the man can no longer walk. His bones were not affected. The information was withdrawn and he stands up and can no longer move. And you ask him and say, what is your name, sir? And he talks like a toddler. The absence of information turn a man to a baby. The technology of words. Words carry presence. Information carries energy. Whether they are spiritual information, whether they are psychological information, whether they are they are um, intellectual information that every time your the gate of your ears and your eye is open to information there is more that happens to you than awareness and enlightenment ladies and gentlemen now I want you to pay attention because I'm showing you a secret that is destroying our generation I show you the reason why men never stay until they win I show you a reason why very few people are victorious in this life do you know why because one of the worst things that happened to us on earth is a system that allowed the information to go uncoordinated is one of the worst discoveries it is an advantage but what a, it was a galore for Satan when that happened. There are still a few nations today. Now I'm not, I'm not, I'm not speaking political. But there are a few nations today that still have some level from an earth realm. From some level of sanity a bit. And the reason why those nations have is the dictators, the leaders there. Worked with the government to stop information dissemination. Is that true? When you study um, stories of men like Adolf Hitler, 
who led the campaign wanting to make Germany to speak about dominance. There were chants and cliches that they continued to put. It was on radio, it was everywhere. And all they were doing is indoctrinating the average German to believe he was superior. And it worked. He built an army not by recruiting men, information. Terrorist groups today continue to recruit people, not necessarily by force. They propose information that can make a young man who is on his way becoming a doctor to suddenly turn and say, I want to become part of a group and will be willing to die for it. Whoever told you information is cheap. Whoever told you information is simple. Where God names himself, the word of God, the information of God. So every time words come to you, here's the technology. When a word is spoken, or you come in contact with words or information, the first thing that happens to you is your imagination is activated. Imaginations cannot be activated until there are words. This is why words are dangerous. Words are the only instruments that have the power to activate imagery from where we get imaginations. Everybody look up. Imagine a yellow orange. Yellow orange. Big yellow orange. Now imagine that someone is cutting that orange with a knife. Are you seeing how whether you like it or not, you are thinking what I'm saying. You are not just hearing it. I'm forcing your mind to move a direction by using the power of information. Now imagine a mother carrying a little baby. Imagine the baby trying to cry. Are, are you seeing how helpless your mind is? Provided the only way you can stop that imagination is to stop the information from reaching you. But once it is there, it has an ability that not even you can control again. Once it enters, it's like a drug. It starts to become an artist. It paints images about God, about life, about Satan. A little baby never believed that life can be hard till an information came. He heard the father or the mother say, Kai, this life self, this life self, and an image began to be created. And that image, listen, it is dangerous because the moment an image is built, your emotions are connected to the image. The moment your emotions are connected to images, creation begins immediately. This is how things manifest. Please, I want you to listen. You will thank me for what you are learning today. When the Bible says, guard your heart with all diligence, it knows what it's saying. That means control the information that enters into your spirit man because out of it, that information is not just words. That information is not just speakings. That information is a potential for creation that can make or mar you. What Elijah is playing now is not just music. What he's playing now, they are words, they are spiritual information operating at different frequencies and because your tripartite nature was designed to understand this your ears may not know what he's saying but your spirit man knows that is the reason why they can use music to calm people down that is why when music was played a demon left Saul the demon had something that Saul did not hear the ear of Saul was not necessary. Just allow the string enter. When it gets to the realm of the spirit, it will change back to words and the spirit will know what is being said. Listen to me. Nations today have gone to war 
simply because of information whole territories have been annihilated because of information there are people today in hellfire because of information who has believed our reports to that man the arm of the Lord has been made revealed words carry spirits words carry energy and this is not some science nonsense I am telling you you literally can program your climate in less than a minute by the entrance he said the entrance of your word give it light and understanding that means show a confused man scattered in destiny just introduce the word of God to that person and that's it your life will begin to reflect the information that you have I'm saying this because listen to me our generation is very careless over our minds our generation is very careless over the power of words in ministry in life people don't seem to have regard for words words are powerful words produce effects words can make words can destroy words can heal words can cause pain words are powerful and if you understand this words create imaginations and they connect us to those imaginations when Satan wants a cause to remain in your family he does not say cause remain he uses words the word of a priest the word of an elder words that have come from father to grandfather now you believe those words and when you believe those words they create images you are emotionally connected to those images and you are loyal to what you believe that is the strength of the altar the altar sits on your emotional connection to those words the day you stop believing those words you are ready for the power of God to smash that thing that's why when the Holy Ghost comes he now tells you are you not aware that there is another information Esther listen her man came and requested the king to approve an information and an information was stamped already and the death sentence of the people were waiting they were going about every day they did not know that they had finished killing them by information even when her man died they were still in trouble because the real enemy was not her man the real enemy was the information Esther knew that the death of her man had not yet solved that problem information and so Esther went to the king and said do you know what you have to write another information that can give an upper hand to preserve my people it was at that Esther chapter 6 that the story ends with honor and glory information words that's what they call a prefool many of you do it People have collapsed because of April Fool. Others have died and no opportunity to tell them I'm joking again. Now watch this. You go to an ATM to withdraw money. Remember the ATM does not speak English. You are just using your eyes. Withdraw for me 5,000 and the ATM says cash unavailable. Immediately that report depresses you. You stand there. A machine did not flog you. A machine did not speak your language. It only created an energy. Remember, you are smiling. The joy of the Lord is my strength. Bouncing to the ATM. And suddenly because you punch and it said cash unavailable, you start thinking, this is how my life is. It did not ask you to think that way. While you are laughing, take seriously what I'm saying. Mm -hmm. Satan waits until the information has been connected to your imagery then he comes he will create a system around it sit upon it and your doom becomes almost imminent this is the victory that overcomes what victory the labor in the spirit to protect the information it is real warfare and it produces real victory are you hearing what I'm saying now? 
there are, there are many of us here that are parents. Why do we prefer, now please, I, I, this is respectful with all my heart, but why will a parent prefer to carry a child to a mission school than an ordinary public school? It may not necessarily just be the standard. The parent wants to keep the child within a sociological sphere that regulates the quality of the information that is in the mind of the child. And to do that because it's not cheap, you will pay for it. That's the reason why a school where there can be people, there's no gate in and out. Anybody can lean on this class and suggest you can pay next to nothing. But there are people who pay millions per term on a child. And you are wondering, it is not only the knowledge they are paying for, they are paying for the atmosphere. Are we together now? When you go to Transcorp, or you go to any of these modern day hotels, you buy a cup of coffee and you can pay 5,000. Stroll 30 meters, 10 meters from that place, you will get the same coffee, hello, the same hot water, the same everything for less than 500 naira. So what did you really pay for? Because your access to that place can give you an information. You can be seated in a lounge when two millionaire businessmen are discussing and you will hear something that can be an advantage. You can be there when politicians are talking. So you are not only paying for tea, you are paying for the energy that you are receiving there. Why does Satan fight your coming to Koinonia? Did you hear the wonderful testimony of that, my dear brother? Why does Satan fight tooth and nail? He knows that it is not only the speakings of a man. That more than what you are hearing, there is a spirit. Please hear what I'm saying. Somebody testified that he got an alert. What did the alert do to him? Notice he had not verified whether the alert would be reversed. As soon as he saw it, he just started becoming glad. Watch this. A student stands in front of the board. He's coming with his friend to check his result. Glory be to God. I'm happy. We'll all be graduates. And he stands in front of the board. And in two minutes, he sees an information. Three carryovers. And that person is there. And for the next one week, he cannot become himself again because an information came. Imagine that while he's standing there, somebody just comes and says, sorry, it's a mistake. It was not your number. Watch, the, immediately he will change back. Now watch this. Look at how you are moving at the frequency of information. Like people who check admission list and don't see their names and they go back depressed and then they see a text congratulations say for what say you got admission say no you are checking your first name check your son name and you quickly check and that's your name immediately you start to dance the information did not tell you to dance it created an energy that supplied action are you getting what i'm saying now that means if words create imaginations that connect us emotionally to it, then we must guard the words and the information that comes to us. Another thing with words is that they compel us to think and act in honor of the persuasions obtained. To think and act in honor of the persuasions. You receive an information that your loved one has gone to be with the Lord. That information does something to you. That's why you cry. That information does something to you. That's why you are gloomy and agitated. That information does something to you. The same way you receive an information, somebody just blessed you with a house. That information does something to you. Now listen to me. Listen to me. When you become a master at creating your own spiritual, emotional, and sociological climate, you have become a master indeed. Do you know why I'm saying that? Because for every open door you read, there are many 
adversaries and guess how the adversaries act they operate through words through words you will be promoted to a company as soon as you get there you'll be happy until you hear that there is tribalism in this company the moment you hear it it begins to affect you a believer has the responsibility please hear me in honor of your destiny in honor of the purposes of God you have a responsibility under God to set a guard not just over your mouth but over your mind to control the information unfortunately our world today is full of all kinds of information people have entered divination not knowing because in a bid to search for truth they stumble across Greek and Hebrew words who went to Latin words who went to ancient words who went to magical chants and before you know it they found themselves in all kinds of things I learned this about my life and I learned this from uncommon mentors and when I learned this it I made it a personal responsibility that my life I was going to guard with jealousy because the information that you are connected to ignites creation and sooner or later you will begin to see those information notice I am a doctor this is a patient he's feeling a little bit of pain in his side and then he comes to me and I run a test and I tell him sir you have cancer and based on this cancer I'm not saying doctors are wrong it is at stage four and usually statistics we built a statistics around this information that at this stage of cancer you have between six months to one year to live any other encouragement to give that man is a waste of time the information has entered let me tell you what will begin to happen my child is only nine years what am I going to do with my nine-year-old child and then the spirit of fear rides upon that information and comes I hope you know that there are cases that don't reach nine months fear is coming the next thing the spirit of suicide comes what good is living while all of this is happening watch this those possibilities will now be making all of these foundational things look strong and powerful as though they veto you and walk they depend on your partnership your reception of words now watch this he said young men the word of God abides in you that means when that kind of report comes there should be if you are a believer there should be war within your spirit if there is no war it's a sign that you are not holding the shield of faith and you are not an overcomer because it is expected that it should enter and meet another information and listen when the word went to hell there was war in hell are we together now Satan mimicking attempting to be the light bearer the word and then the word himself the logos of God there was war in hell and he triumphed over them and came out as the firstborn of the begotten. the war happened in the realm of the spirit but the result was seen in the physical realm the war always happens in the realm of the spirit the death happens in the realm of the spirit the defeat happens in the realm of the spirit and all we see is the physical manifestation Satan and Jesus did not come to the earth and then they came out and said wow now we no 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 the battle was won there the keys were collected and he came out victorious and said all hail all power immediately he resurrected he spoke straight up there is something you need disciples come together in three days you had something that changed your mind little children come feed my lamb tarry in Jerusalem the Holy Ghost is coming information that's what he left them with when the angels came they said why look up you know to the sky this same Jesus you have seen he will return that became the basis of salvation the death the burial the resurrection of Christ Paul created a theology out of that information that is where we stand today he calls it the power of God unto salvation please listen to what I tell you 
our children watch cartoons and people get initiated why because of information notice that when these children here they start chanting what they are saying even if it's part of what they are saying whether or not they understand it and they become emotionally connected to it and it begins to affect them i write to you young men because you are strong fathers you know this you are equipped in knowledge but i write to you young men because you are strong i write to you young men because the word of god is abiding in you and because of that abiding word satan is going to come and when he comes fight what fight the fight of allowing the word of god gain superiority he said let god be true and let every man be a liar this is the warfare of the believer I got a report from home in the name of Jesus let the word of God well up within me I decree and declare there is no death in my family there is no going down there is only rising up the hand of God is upon me you are fighting the warfare you are using that faith that the bible calls is the victory i give you a guarantee there is one thing satan does not have an indefinite power to survive it is the keeper of israel that does not sleep nor slumber satan can be weary But there are many weak believers we sit down and allow the devil shred our lives into pieces we sit down and allow the devil to take advantage do you know there are people right now who are like if you can imagine in the realm of the spirit imagine chains that are a result of several presents that came because of words you will fail you will die your life will not rise you are good for nothing and you sit down and it leads to depression The birth of anything valuable is painful. It will require you knowing how to fight Satan. I'm saying this because this thing is killing people all over the earth. Internet. People go online and type something. Go online and just put something. Bam, and they hear an information that depresses their life forever. Oh, the job you did with that class there is a statistics like this that out of the so 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 million of graduates only three in ten years see let me tell you the truth and I submit to you many information on this earth are useless as far as your life is concerned as far as your victory is concerned you have an assignment to lean and help the spirit of truth to guide you into the truth that are necessary for your life if you expose yourself to just any and every kind of information you will lose the anointing you will lose relevance you will lose power your strength is in your protecting that information you must guard yourself is God speaking to us this gentleman sings I can tell him one word your song is beautiful it will take you around the earth he can carry that information and be working with it until he meets a manager and the manager looks at him and says what tribe are you you are not this tribe mr man i don't want to lie to you i'm sorry another information creates presence listen we are going to pray tonight and many of you do not know that you are in the you are in the midst of different demonic energies that have come from words and because you are connected to these various things they make good things look evil it is this energy that will make good people look like devils even if somebody looks at you and say nice hair you say nice hair for what you are reacting to an energy there are information that has come to you that nothing good will come out of your life so it corrupts your perception when God says I want to lift you like Mephibosheth you say am I a dog God go and lift others 
tonight we have come to tear these things is why people don't prosper let me tell you it doesn't matter what kind of business you do the real business is the business of information is the reason why no great businessman will teach anything valuable everywhere they will call you and culture you and make sure you are ready to receive what they are telling you there was something Peter, James, and John saw and knew that the rest did not know. That was why they became the pillars. There are things God has shown me in my life about himself. There are things God has revealed to me. They become the objects of my protection because they are the pillars of my success. And if anything happens to them, then it will shred my life into pieces and I will continue to labor to protect them. Let me tell you this, your atmosphere is waiting for you to stand in faith and tear down that atmosphere. Otherwise, I don't care what kind of deliverance you do, you will get up and fall down. Your life will never change that atmosphere. I can stand in front of this guy and pick the signals of depression. I can stand in, not word of knowledge, I can pick the signals of discouragement. Why? Because I am also a spirit being and this guy has been programmed by an atmosphere. Let me tell you this. Human beings are simply walking atmospheres, carrying their possibilities around. And you have an assignment under God to fight this warfare of preserving your atmosphere, the insistence. It's called the faith that brings victory. You must be careful what you say to yourself. You must be careful what you say to others. You must be careful what you hear from yourself. You must be careful what you hear about others. It is not the information, it is the effect on your life, on your destiny. It is the effect. Um, a few days ago, I, I was watching an interview between some of the billionaires in the world and I was shocked at the, they are so cultured. Words are expensive to them. You see the way they speak. And then I was watching CNN. I don't know when was it. I was just watching a, 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 an impeachment probe that, that is going on and so on and so on. And I mean, you, you could see the way those guys were meticulously words. Just one word, not said correctly, can be the... And I said, ah, God, grant me the grace to master words. If my destiny is word dependent, then do something to my life. This is more than the ability to speak English. This is the ability to make sure that your communications are cultured, seasoned with salt. Number two, to ensure that you have an atmosphere that is a shield. That faith, immune by the word of God. When death comes, it finds an information. When discouragement comes, it finds an information. You are enveloped in it. Just like that. The shield. Please hear me. The days that are coming will require this understanding. The days that are coming, you will need to be the prophet of your own destiny. The days that are coming, you will need to set a guard over your mind. Your prosperity depends on it. Your lifting depends on it. Those of us in ministry, listen twice. Let me tell you, the days that are coming, you must master the art of ensuring that your spiritual climate, that your intellectual climate, that your emotional climate is seasoned with the word of God. It's an assignment you must do because a lot depends on it. Let me show you one scripture and then we'll find a place to pray. Second Kings chapter 7. Please pray in the spirit in one minute. Second Kings chapter 7. Second Kings chapter 7. 
second Kings chapter 7 hallelujah please look up watch this then Elisha said this is the prophet hear ye the word he, he wants to change farming now I want to show you the technology until now Samaria is under siege to the point that women are eating their children do you think those women started eating their children like that somebody must have said something that made women to see their children as food because children are not food tomorrow about this time information everybody say words shall a measure of flying flour be, be sold for a shekel and two measures of barley for a shekel in the gate of samaria next verse verse 2 and then this other lord said a lot of things simply because he did not fight the prophet he fought the information that came from god and there was a consequence he said behold thou shalt see it with your eyes but thou shalt not eat thereof next verse now watch how god brings his word to pass look up please we're about to pray there were four leprous men at the entering in of the gate and they said the spirit of prophecy made them to start saying to one another are you seeing how this thing works they were not talking to themselves before but an anointing came as soon as that anointing came information started coming why they said to one another why sit we here till we die was that the first time they were sitting there they had been there but see every word is sponsored by spirits listen to what i tell you when they were prophesying I hope you know these four lepers did not hear it they did not hear the prophecy but the spirit that went with that prophecy started searching for men and they were sitting they didn't even know a spirit had come upon them the next thing the urge to talk and they said why should we sit here and die and as soon as they started contemplating go back go to verse 4 if we say we will enter the city then famine is in this city and we shall die there and if we sit here we will die also please talk to me what has this got to do with four lepers sitting down it is not about leprosy it is creation about to happen but creation cannot happen until spiritual information come even for lepers even if you cannot walk you can hear It says now therefore come they are talking to one another let us fall onto the host of the Syrians if we save us alive we shall die if they kill us we shall but die look at this these are people sitting at the gate running away from hunger and in minutes courage comes upon them and they make up their mind let's just go and give ourselves to our enemy if we die information now watch this verse 5 and they rose up what time at twilight to go to the camp of the Syrians and when they were come to the uttermost part of the camp of Syria behold there was no man there what happened next verse hallelujah Mako Sibra Katushiata for the Lord made the host of the Syrians to hear a noise he did something to their perception they got an information I'm showing you how they ran away they got an information and then even a great noise and they said the same way the lepers said to one another this guy said to one another lo the king of Israel had hired against us are you seeing what perception does it gives you ideas that are not there they, there was no business the kings themselves were afraid but here is an information making a weak man look strong the king had hired against us the kings of the Hittites the Egyptians and so on and so forth to come upon us wherefore they arose and fled also in the twilight and left their tents their horses their asses 
abandoned the camp as it was and fled for their life. Eight. And when these lepers came to the uttermost part of the camp, they went into one tent and did eat and drink. And they carried silver, gold, raiment, and went and hid it, and came again, and entered into another tent, and carried all of this, verse 9, to tell you it was the Spirit of God. They now said, the same Spirit now made them to pass another information. It would have stopped at them stealing to run away, but the goal would not be achieved. The goal was the salvation of Samaria, not the healing of four lepers. So the Spirit now came, and still made them to say to one another again, we do not well. Same spirit. Can you imagine that? One moment they are stealing and running away and happy. Next moment they are convicted and say we do not do well. This is the day of good tidings and we hold our peace. If we tarry till morning, what if some mischief come upon us? Now therefore come, let us go to the king's house and tell him this good report. That king, we came and found food here. Four lepers were used to save a nation through the power of words. I'm showing you the technology. If one of those lepers, just one, said I'm not going, the rest would have been discouraged. It was the spirit of God that made all of them to unanimously agree. Man of God, let me show you where the next level of your ministry is. It's not just in a man. It is in an information. There is something you can hear. There is something you have heard. There is something you are hearing that is shaping your life literally. We are products of the information that we have heard. There is something Koinonia has heard that has been the building block upon which the faith of God rests. There is something our families have heard that has authorized darkness to defeat us. Tonight in prayer is a warfare of words. To stand to say, Lord, a generation depends on the quality of not only my spiritual enlightenment, but the warfare. My children are depending on the quality. Listen, let me tell you this. The Bible says, I think it's Mark 4 or so. Did I write it here? Mark chapter 4 and verse 24. Let me show you God's standard. It says, take heed what ye hear. With what measure ye meet, it shall be measured to you. That means hearing is also sowing when you hear it's like a farmer putting seeds and he said that if you hear you are drawing more of that that means you keep attracting more things to your life are you seeing why more tragedies continue to come to people because their minds continue to create the climate for it this is where it comes from it shall be measured to you and unto you that hear shall more be given more of what you hear more of what you hear if you hear the word of god you hear things that build you more of it will come you hear about the anointing it will bring the anointing more of it will come you hear about that's why we must be careful now i minister deliverance and all of that but i have a little problem with talking about satan and talking about demons every day and forever it is dangerous because more than the information you are trying to pass, you are shaping the minds of the people to the point that they will never ever see victory again. When Isaiah, the year that King Uzziah died, Isaiah told us what he saw. He said, I saw the Lord. I saw the Lord. Son of man, what seest thou? You must choose what you hear. Parus Kadia. You must choose what you see. Words is a battle of destiny. Please understand what I'm telling you. It's a battle of destiny. Words are like drugs. The only thing is that they don't enter through your mouth. Once they enter your spirit, they can keep you poor. 
they can keep you less anointed but when you embrace the engrafted word it is able to make you this is the place of encounter this is the place of surrender be what you are. This is the place where my flesh gives way. Do to me what you are. This is the place where my life is changed. Do to me what you are. The disciples went into hiding because of something they heard. As soon as Jesus resurrected, he told Mary Magdalene, he said, run, go and tell them this new information. Jesus is alive, he's risen, the tomb is empty. As soon as she went to tell them, that information gave them energy. Listen, you are dying today physically because of something that entered your ears something else must enter you tonight as the spirit something else i am able i am well able i am well able 12 spies were sent 10 of them came with something called an evil report the bible did not call it an honest report it called it an evil it was their perception they brought and the bible says i don't care if it's not the word of god it's an evil report and joshua and caleb said let's go up at once he said we are well able they were the only two that entered the promised land listen listen you must make it a project to frustrate satan in your life you must make it a project to disallow he is at the mercy of your understanding this truth i write to you fathers because you have known i write to you sons because although you do not know you have strength you can fight and experience can come out of your battle that when you now become fathers you can mentor other sons I write to you fathers young men because the word abides in you so when words come it's a battle of words and you fight in the spirit to preserve those words listen he said you shall receive power after the Holy Ghost comes but what they received made them to speak on the day of Pentecost fire came on their head but the reaction was speaking they began to speak from that speaking 3,000 were saved from that speaking the church began to advance please hear me your destiny is bigger than your today man of God this level of ministry is only the starting point and let me tell you this if you can hold on to that victory the bible calls the fight to protect god's information the victory that overcomes the victory that overcomes the victory that overcomes the victory that overcomes overcomes lift your voice and begin to blast in the spirit the victory that overcomes the victory that overcomes in the name of Jesus the victory that overcomes even our faith the victory that overcomes even our faith the victory that overcomes even our faith the victory that overcomes Pray, be a speaking spirit tonight. Pray, be a speaking spirit tonight. Be a speaking spirit tonight. 
change from a dry season to a rainy season. Any climate can change when we pray. Elijah prayed dry season to become rainy season. You are going to pray that every atmosphere and every climate that ministers death, that ministers discouragement, that in the name of Jesus, both the information and the atmosphere live my life. Speak to it. Speak to your childhood. Speak to your limitations. I come in the name of the Lord, the captain of the armies of heaven. Corinthians 14 verse 10. Read with me. One to read. There are as it may be so many kinds of voices in the world and none of them is without signification. That means no voice at all is just a social voice. No voice at all is just a technology voice. No Every voice is programming your destiny. Whether it is the voice of a mentor, the voice of the word of God, the voice of culture, the voice of your childhood, the voice of your family, you are going to pray. The Bible says bringing down every stronghold and every thought to the obedience of Christ. Lift your voice and tear down words and information.
Hallelujah. Listen to me. The Bible says, while men slept, the enemy came and sowed seeds and went his way. But the Bible says, every tree that has not been planted by my father, in the realm of your spirit and in the realm of your mind, you are going to uproot and tear down by faith. Lift your voice and declare, I uproot. Every speaking, I uproot. Every foundation, I uproot. Every perception, I uproot. Every communication that is not consistent with the character. Every communication that is not consistent with my goal, with my destiny, with my thumbprints. I call against it in the name of Jesus. Is someone praying tonight? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Please look up while still praying. It's a strong anointing here. The Bible says, resist the devil and he will flee. But we need to know how we resist the devil in this kingdom. Matthew chapter 4 verse 10. Please give it to us quickly. Matthew chapter 4 and verse 10. Resist the devil. Matthew, help us media. Matthew chapter 4 and verse 10. This is how Jesus rebuked and resisted the devil. Then said Jesus to him, Get thee then, Satan, for it is written. That is the basis. It is written. Not I think, not I wish, it is written. The victory that overcomes is a victory that is written. Written. The logos. Get thee then poverty, for it is written. Get thee then limitation, for it is written. Lift your voice and declare, Satan away from my destiny, away from my life. It is written. Speak scripture. It is written. Yeah. 
Hallelujah. Prophet Joel. Prophet Joel taught us a very deep mystery. In chapter 3, please give it to us we are praying. Chapter 3 and verse 10, Joel. Joel 3 and verse 10. Beat your plowshares into swords. In other words, it's time for the fight of faith. And your pruning forks into spares. This is not just a time for harvest. It's a time for warfare. And then it says, in that warfare, let the weak say, I am strong. Let the poor say, I am rich. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so. You are about to say so now. This is strategy. Everything the Bible says you are, Everything the word of God says you are, you are about to say it now. Lift your voice and begin to prophesy. I am strong. In the name of Jesus, I am blessed. Is someone praying? I am anointed. My business is flourishing. Pray. The ministry is flourishing by the spirit. My home is flourishing by the power of the Holy Ghost. My finances is flourishing by the spirit of the Christ. I go from glory to glory. I go from grace to grace. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We are going to pray. And listen to me. You are going to declare. The Lord spoke to us that this is our year of extraordinary fruitfulness. You are going to pray and prophesy. It must be as he said. It must be as he said. Over every area of my life. Lift your voice now and begin to pray. It must be as said. Rest of the 
Job chapter 5, verse 19. Job chapter 5, verse 19. We'll read 19 and 20. Job chapter 5. Job chapter 5. Are we there? He shall deliver thee in six troubles. Yea, in seven shall no evil touch you. Verse 20. In famine. This is the first kind of trouble that comes upon men in the earth. Famine. He shall redeem thee from death. In war. He shall redeem thee from the power of the sword. 21. Thou shalt be hid from the scourge of the tongue. Neither shalt thou be afraid of destruction when it cometh. At destruction and famine thou shalt laugh. Neither shalt thou be afraid of the beasts of the earth. For thou shalt be in league with the stones of the field. Listen, this is a mystery that one day God will grant me the grace to teach in this place. The word league is covenant. That you will be in, in a covenant with the stones of the field. And the beast of the field shall be at peace with you. Listen, he said in six troubles, yes, seven. He shall deliver you. You are about to pray these prayers. In famine, in war, the speakings and the tongues of men, Lord, arise by the Spirit. And let my life see your salvation. Let my life see your salvation. Lift your voice and pray. Are you praying? Are you praying? 
Spirit opens to me the treasures of your word, and I will forever sing your praise. Your spirit, I will sing of the wonders of your word. I will sing. I will see of the wonders of your word, and I will forever sing your praise. James chapter 1, verse 5. Forever sing your praise. And I will forever sing. The Bible says, if any of you lack wisdom. So the Bible tells us it is possible that a man can lack wisdom. It does not stop him from being a human being. It is possible to live without the wisdom of God at work in you. And it says, if any of you lack wisdom. The question here before we read on is how do you know you lack wisdom because you only ask when you don't have it but how do i know that i do not have wisdom because remember the bible says every man is right in his own eyes so based on what parameter what parameter do i use to arrive at the conclusion that i am bankrupt of wisdom there is nobody I know on earth with the exception of few people who will admit that they are not wise. Is that true? You try telling somebody who considers himself a gentleman and say, I don't think you are exactly wise. Then you think the person will laugh at you and say, wow, I'm just learning that. No, you're going to have a big problem. The person says, not wise? Me? Am I a madman? Do I look like one? But the Bible says if any of you realizes that he lacks wisdom so the first assignment is not to ask the first assignment is to find out how do you know that the wisdom of god that the spirit of wisdom is working in your life are we together now there must be a system in the kingdom that god has provided to help men understand so i can come to the conclusion because you see as human beings it is very difficult for us to admit that certain things are not working in our lives especially for believers we are people of faith and sometimes we can exaggerate it and admitting the deficiency of certain qualities in our lives it's not natural for men to admit are we together now yes When you tell someone he can't cook, say, no, 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 I can't cook. What are you? I mean, this is it. You are evidently seeing that this meal is not servable. And the person is saying, I can cook. Because in his eyes, this is a wonderful meal. Are we together? You are seeing a gentleman who is not looking smart. And you are saying, no, no, no. You are not dressing smart. Say, no, no, no. I mean, as far as I'm concerned, I'm very, very okay. So it is difficult. I'm explaining to you this, this if any man lack wisdom it's a very deep process to arrive at a point let me tell you realizing whatever makes you come to a point where you know you do not have wisdom has to be the spirit of god the arrogance of men does not allow for that level of admission we can secretly desire to be wiser 
we can secretly admire individuals who the spirit of wisdom is evidently working in but to outspokenly admit no it's very uncomfortable are we together but the bible says if any of you lack wisdom let him ask who let him ask of god that giveth unto how many men so the manifestation of the wisdom of god in the life of a believer is not privy to certain intelligent people it's not privy to apostles and prophets no the giving of this operation of the spirit is given to all men he says he does so liberally and then an upbraided not and it shall be given that means if i look at your life and i do not see wisdom i am safe to conclude at certain things number one that you have not received and you receive not because you have not asked and you ask not because you have not seen the deficiency in your life are you seeing that now that means if you look at my life and your life and i am bankrupt of the wisdom of god not the wisdom of men that comes to naught the wisdom of god if it is not in my life the bible says if i ask it should be given so if it is not in my life and god is benevolent it means that i have not genuinely asked and i have not asked because i have not seen the need and when there was no more vessel the oil stopped that means something about my understanding i have indoctrinated myself into believing that i have sufficient wisdom let me tell you the formula that the bible designed for men to know whether there is wisdom in their lives or not wisdom is very vocal the bible says wisdom is justified by her children wisdom is justified by her children there are fruits in your life and my life that validate the presence of wisdom there has to be fruits in your life and my life there are things i cannot as a human being be sure of whether you have them or not i leave that to god wisdom is not part of those because if the wisdom of God is functioning in the life of an individual, it is justified by the results. Children there talks of the results. The proceedings that come from a life that is under the influence of wisdom. So how do you know tonight whether or not the wisdom of God and more so the spirit of wisdom is at work? Very simple. Look at your results. Look at your life unbiasedly look at your life unashamedly and then you can come to the conclusion that mm -mm, the repetition of pain the repetition of failure listen carefully the repetition of struggle the repetition of hardship the repetition of the absence of the power the grace the favor of God in your life is a testament that the spirit of wisdom may not be at work in you. The spirit of God is at work in you. But that dimension of wisdom may not be at work in you. Are you blessed? Lack of the wisdom of God is what is responsible for the anxiety of men. You know what it means to be anxious? Worrisome the fear that plagues people you will always fear until you know what to do and he himself knew what he ought to do the bible took out time to talk about anxiety philippians chapter 4 and when you read from verse 6 to 7 it says be anxious for nothing please give it to us let's let's look at it before we, we talk some more about wisdom it says be the word careful there does not just mean be careless it means be anxious for nothing but in everything by prayer we see prayer again you leave that we're going to touch that later but it says be anxious for nothing 
but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving let your request be made known to god there is an information that can take away anxiety anxiety let me tell you something it's not proof that satan is around you is proof that the spirit of wisdom is not at work in your life it's an uncomfortable truth we must admit our world is full of people dying of anxiety where will this come from where will i mean what no no the pain and fear jesus took half of a whole chapter to talk about worry spoke about the birds of the air that break a spiritual law that is responsible for abundance it says yet your father yet not solomon arrayed in all of his splendor and apparel is like one of these anxiety is proof that the spirit of wisdom is not at work anxiety stems from uncertainty there is a level of uncertainty that is around our lives financially speaking spiritually speaking so you are about to um, do certain things embark on your life's journey and then because of the gaps of uncertainty you find out that there is worry and anxiety unbelief comes in fear comes in because of fear you become self-centered because you are aware that something about you will fail so you become possessive self-centered angry and all these other elements come in I found a very interesting scripture we're going to read it and then i'll define for you what wisdom is psalms 119 from verse 98 to 100 psalms 119 from verse 98 to 100 are we there read it please one to read ah uh ah -uh. one to read Thou through their, thy commandments have made me wiser than my enemies, for they are ever before me. Next verse. I have more understanding than all my teachers, for your testimonies are my meditation. The last verse. I understand more than the ancient. Stop, stop, don't rush it. I understand more than my enemies you made me wiser than my enemies you made me wiser than my teachers and you made me wiser than the ancient and there is a key we're coming there are we together it says thou by thy commandments by thy laws ah, you have made me wiser wiser than my enemies so i can rise wiser than my teachers wiser than the ancient because i have kept your secret psalms 104 verse 24 psalm 104 verse 24 oh lord how manifold are thy works everybody say results i want you to read it just the first line but change works with results ready one to read oh lord how manifold are thy results how did the results come about in wisdom thou has made them all lord i look at your life and is full of mighty works results and the psalmist was careful to let us know that they did not just happen because you are God it is by engaging wisdom wisdom that these possibilities have been made manifest and the earth is full of your riches which is one of the results that you have produced in wisdom there is a relationship between results and wisdom there is a relationship between riches and wisdom how manifold how multifaceted how awe-inspiring are your works what is wisdom i put a definition here wisdom is possessing 
scriptural solutions scriptural solutions to life's challenges and engaging them appropriately wisdom is possessing scriptural solutions to life's challenges and engaging them appropriately possessing scriptural solutions to life's challenges and engaging them appropriately what is wisdom knowing what to do and doing it wisdom is knowing what to do and doing it if there is no doing it is not wisdom wisdom is knowing what to do and doing it possessing the scriptural solution there are many solutions there are many ways that seem it right unto a man but the end thereof will justify what way he took so scriptural solutions to life's challenges and then having the possession of those solutions you engage them appropriately you are wise if you do that are we together so you have wisdom to the degree to which we see you preferring scriptural solutions to the challenges that are around your life and others and the results that they produce many people listen to me do not possess this quality and there is an operation of the spirit that can make men to have this quality lavishly that regardless of your age listen carefully regardless of your educational background regardless of what your level of orientation that you can be um you can have a an influence of this dimension of the holy spirit at work in your life and all of a sudden your life opens up wonder after wonder a comprehension of the scriptural solutions listen to me if i ask everyone now write your prayer request and bring it here right now there are people who are going to ask for pages not pieces of papers every one thing that you are writing is in need of an answer is that true the bible says the spirit of wisdom is able to route you in a way and manner that you possess the keys that it takes to turn that request into your testimony and then the fortitude to engage the laws you now know until the results become evident in your life is called wisdom proverbs chapter 4 and verse 7 to 9 proverbs chapter 4 please don't trivialize what i'm teaching you tonight wisdom is the principal thing it's using a business terminology now wisdom is the principal thing it says therefore get wisdom and with all thy getting get understanding verse 8 exalt her personifies wisdom now exalt her like you would do a lady you love exalt her is that true like you see a man treat his wife that he so loves he says exalt her and there is a reward for exalting her prize her above all else and she shall do what what is responsible for promotion it is true that God is the lifter of men but the dimension of him that lifts men is his wisdom meaning if you are in a position for a long time it's not just an attack from hell but it's a sign that the spirit of wisdom is not at work the spirit of wisdom creates motion in your life it not only creates motion it creates an upgrade to your life it is because of the presence of this possibility that the bible says the path of the just is like the shining light that shines ever brighter onto the perfect day exalt her and she shall promote thee now listen ah. it says she shall bring thee to honor 
It didn't say she shall bring thee honor. Honor is here. It's not just a. It's not just an attribute. It's a realm of existence that wisdom can, like an usher, say, "Follow me. I will lead you somewhere, regardless of your background, as a preacher." As a businessman, as a mother, a father, wisdom can usher you. And whilst you follow her foolishly, you will get into a realm. The name of that realm is honor. Not an event. It is how you live. Honor. That wisdom can bring a man to honor when thou dost embrace her. Are we together? Like Ruth held on to Naomi, I'm not leaving you. I have seen the value of your presence in my life. Your God will be my God. Your people will be my people. Exalt her and she shall promote thee. She shall bring thee to honor. This is what people are looking for. They are looking for promotion in the spirit. They are looking for promotion in finances. Promotion in influence. Men of God are struggling, trusting God. Increase in membership. Increase in whatever. This is the formula. God gives us and we ignore him. And then we keep searching around. Verse 9. This is what the Bible says. She shall give to thy head, hallelujah, an ornament of grace. A crown of glory shall she deliver. Who is the she here? wisdom wisdom that for embracing wisdom it can veto your background it can veto any other thing in your life brothers and sisters and bring you to this possibility this is the realm that we all desire to get there and the bible tells you that the way to get there is wisdom are we together yes the Bible says through wisdom a house is built. A house is built not through desire. Through desire the intention to build is there. But the actual building is through wisdom. This ministry brothers and sisters you see was built and is being maintained by wisdom. Every great man and woman you acknowledge around the world, every great enterprise that you see and admire, everyone who has come to a position of influence in the kingdom has done so by the manifestation of the spirit of wisdom. Years ago, I was listening to Pat Robertson, the founder of CBN, 700 Club. And he said as a young man, when he was about to start ministry, he said he went to the Lord. He said, Lord, I'm a young man about to start. Give me three things. Number one, he said, give me wisdom. Number two, he said, give me favor. Number three, he said, give me the anointing of the spirit. Ah, I went back to God too. And I said, Lord, thank God I'm still young. Number one, give me wisdom. Boy, I stayed there before moving to favor. Because I knew that that wisdom, I, I, my life was so bankrupt of it. How else would I have gotten it? Our society is full of unwise people. It's not an insult, it's a description. They are sincere people. But their decisions and their results are very clear. That the wisdom of God, of God, not Sophia, not human wisdom. We are talking of a dimension of wisdom here. That has nothing to do with age and not necessarily education and all of that. The wisdom of God. The faculty to produce result as God, at God's level. The spirit of wisdom. Deuteronomy chapter 34 and verse 9. The reason why Joshua excelled was not just that he was anointed. Joshua always had the anointing. The anointing was there. But the Bible says, and Joshua, the son of Nun, was full of what? The spirit of wisdom. He was already full of the spirit. And yet Moses was told to lay hands on him. How do you lay hands on someone who is already filled with the spirit? And Joshua, the son of Nun, was full of the spirit of wisdom. Not full of wisdom. Full of the spirit of wisdom. For Moses had laid his hands upon him and the children of Israel hearkened unto him 
and he did as the Lord commanded Moses Joshua full of the spirit of wisdom Joshua full of the spirit of wisdom no wonder when Moses died there was nothing much for God to tell him again he said Moses my servant is dead Joshua my only encouragement is for you to be strong you already have the spirit of wisdom mm. you have it just be strong you are a young man and I know that leading these people is difficult but there is a spirit in you you will lead them in a way that will make you a wonder leadership is by the spirit of wisdom let me tell you this listen any man on earth listen to me carefully any man on earth and in the kingdom that multitudes are listening to him respect him human beings are not stupid are you hearing what i'm saying you can have a crowd of foolish people but there is a level to which there is there is a level to which human beings will not be more foolish than that jesus went up the mountain and a crowd followed him there was something he was telling them there was something contained in his teachings i commend you to the word of his grace that is able to make you wise not knowledgeable hidden is a principle that can bring solutions to your pain ah. there are families that if they knew this weeping will stop it's true there are individuals that if they know this weeping will stop he said i wept for no man was worthy to open the book and unlock the scroll and the elder tapped me and said weep not the book can be opened when the book is open then tears i look at times in my life when i was so bankrupt of certain dimensions of wisdom and i looked at the tears that came from my eyes but no more his wisdom has come hmm. i will sing of the wonders of your word i will sing out for joy i will sing of the wonders of your word and i will forever sing your praise and for preachers we need this so much you know most times we don't start ministry with wisdom we start ministry with passion passion and then your passion leads you to spiritual activities that bring certain dimensions of the anointing and then while the ministry starts going at a point you hook in one place still anointed but wisdom you can't move further because the promoter is wisdom the exalter is wisdom the one who brings you to the realm of honor is wisdom herein lies the answer to the dilemma we see that gifted people still don't rise because to be gifted and to be wise are two different things you can be full of so much anointing and yet live an unrewarded life and yet not be able to rise in the spirit but god is changing someone's story in the name of jesus christ the son of the living god i have watched people do you know um sometimes i sit down and i look at people truly speaking when i look at people i fight tears because i know what they are doing wrong i don't fight tears because of their situation i know i fight tears because i can explain why their lives are that way i have seen well-meaning lovely men and women of god that i love and honor with all my heart but i look at their lives the same way my life was and i know where they are missing it please no result is a mistake please learn this you may not understand what is being engaged but there is something being engaged to produce that outcome You may not understand what is being engaged, but there is something being engaged. A man does not just become powerful. No, no. 
A man does not just last in ministry. A man does not just become anointed. Brothers and sisters, please listen to me. The fact that you don't know what is being done does not mean something is not being done. Your miracle is when the solution comes and when the grace to apply it is released. Then you know that challenge has come to an end. Isaiah 11 tells us there is a real spirit of wisdom, verse 2. That the Holy Spirit can manifest in a man as wisdom. Notice that even for the building of the tabernacle and in the Lord's house, God did not allow people to be involved carelessly. The spirit of wisdom had to come upon them to produce God's desired results. If the spirit of wisdom comes upon your ministry, your ministry will change in a way not just from human terms you will find out that the possibilities that only God can produce is what happens in your life years ago I'm not a social media person but the Lord spoke to me revealing the strategy for the next level of ministry and this is what the Lord told me I said Lord how will your word get to people and all of that yes we're going to have a tv ministry but that's for another time but how is it going to happen and this is what the lord told me at that time they sell messages you don't upload messages online and the lord said this is the strategy don't sell any message let the messages be packaged and put it online i will give it wings to the ends of the earth the wisdom of god it never made sense then what is this who has the time to download heavy mbs of an audio not video people are not, i mean when somebody can buy a cd and slot it who do you think you are but when his wisdom comes in something that looks so foolish go around jericho seven times just go around it has never been done oh god just go around and at the seventh time that act of wisdom crashes down Jericho. Brothers and sisters, that one act till today, this ministry will never recover from it. That one act in obedience to the spirit of wisdom. That's it. Mm. I live to praise your name. I have no fear of what tomorrow brings. The spirit of wisdom is what is responsible for being able to afford the bills of ministry please hear me there is no ministry except you want to manipulate people don't be angry at men of god that you see manipulating people for let me tell you you are doing ministry and you want to work in financial integrity and still work in financial abundance you've got to receive an impartation of the spirit of wisdom otherwise it will wear your grace out you will cry one day to death You need it in your life. There are many Christian homes that is very clear the spirit of wisdom is not there. The decisions are always leading to pain. The decisions are always leading to retrogression. Remember I told you that wisdom is justified by her children. So if I claim the spirit of wisdom is in my life and everything I do is moving me back, I should check something is wrong. Something is wrong. There are men of God who are going back and back and back. There are individuals going back. They are better yesterday than they are today. No matter what kind of prayer you pray for them. I've seen individuals that I didn't see for a long time. And you look at them and their lives are a tragedy. They are still serving the Lord. That's the painful part. They never, they, they didn't backslide. Still passionate. And you say, why is your life like this? Are these your children? Yes, sir. Why are they like this? Man of God, God is faithful. No, sir. Don't, don't, don't. That does not look like faithfulness. Is God challenging us? Some of our parents are pastors. They've been pastors for many years. I'm not talking about finances. No growth. There is no day that the ministry breaks through that you can say sinners have been saved, lives have been transformed, pain after pain. Let me tell you, repetition of pain is a sign that you need the spirit of wisdom. 
it is the principal thing the bible says it is the principal thing there are ministries that rise and fall they rise to a level they are doing so well and then at a point you find out that things start to nose dive no scandal no nothing just they have exhausted the level of wisdom that can take them beyond that level and they come down the scriptural solution to life's problem and the fortitude to engage it appropriately is called wisdom standing let me use someone come come show standing between this gentleman and his destiny whether it is spiritually speaking whether it is financially speaking the obstacle other forces are there like favor and the rest but it is wisdom that tells you what to do for other forces you know why the bible says it is the principal thing because all other forces depend on it it is when you engage the truths that are received from heaven that other forces now start coming into play the anointing this and that it is wisdom that shows you what to do for the anointing to be multiplied in your life it is wisdom that tells you what to do for favor to be activated it is wisdom that tells you what to do for restoration to come all other manifestations are dependent on wisdom so in the interim there are many other forces but the principal force wisdom are we together so i do not i know that i should get there i know that if favor comes i will arrive there i know that there is a way i can be healed i know that there is a way the prophetic gift can be multiplied but what is that way what is that way and how do i engage it it is the spirit of wisdom that has brought forth these seven days of divine visitation because there is something that you can engage that will bring other things and then the spirit of wisdom comes i can show you a man that is carrying the spirit of wisdom his results her results it is true wisdom is justified by her children if you accept this thing tonight then we can finish up that verse if any of you lack results if any of you lack results if you lack results you lack wisdom if any of you lack results if your spiritual life lacks potency if your finances lack potency if your influence and your leadership and whatever it is that you're involved in lacks potency no promotion no growth nobody desires your grace you are living an unrewarded life spiritually and otherwise it says that if you lack this it's a sign that the wisdom of god is not at work in you hallelujah let me share with you very briefly how the spirit of wisdom works this is the core of what i'm teaching tonight most people are aware we've taught several teachings on the holy spirit and we've taught on wisdom you can make reference to my teaching what wisdom is this but the operation how it works is where i think that most people have not been able to access it mm. how is the spirit of wisdom how does it operate how do i activate the spirit of wisdom so that it produces for me ready let's finish up the scripture james chapter 1 and verse 5 James chapter 1 verse 5 There is wisdom in the name of Jesus There is wisdom in the name of Jesus If, if any one of you lack results which is a product of lack of wisdom what's the first thing? Let him ask you have not because
you ask not. Not because God is unable to give it. Let him ask. Let him ask. Let him pray. Let him raise up a petition from a desperate heart that when I begin to pray, my prayer not only brings the manifestation of the spirit of wisdom, but also activates its operation. If prayer can bring wisdom, then prayer can make it work too. Are we together now? Yes. Let him pray. I can know a man functioning under the influence of the spirit of God by the results that come from his prayer. Not just his prayer. I need to see the results that come from your prayer. The reason why many ministries have poor prayer meetings is because over time people have concluded that prayer does not work they cannot see the results from it do you know that praying in the spirit captures something the bible calls the hidden wisdom of god that the princes of this world did not know it says for if they had known this they would not crucify the lord of glory there was something paul was doing while he was praying and praying in the spirit that began to grant him access prayer activates the operation of the spirit of wisdom not just bringing the anointing in your life the functionality the operation of the spirit of wisdom is released as you pray while they prayed they didn't know what to do how do we advance the gospel across this territory they prayed and they fasted and the spirit of wisdom came separate me paul and barnabas this is a strategy they stood before jericho listen when you know that the spirit of wisdom is with you you will never fear when you see challenges all you need to know is to wait till the answer come many of us never wait we go ahead and say let the answer follow me and we call it faith and it damages us into pieces may never live to have a second chance when joshua got before jericho the bible says the fence of jericho could host five chariots fortified tooth and nail to a point that a prostitute could comfortably live in the fence the fence of jericho was like cgc how do you penetrate the place do you shoot is it an arrow is it a gun do you jump the spirit of wisdom he said don't worry they circumcised themselves and set their heart apart and an angel just came and revealed a strategy do this do that and the lord spoke the spirit of wisdom go around the city seven times and on the seventh day go around seven times the spirit of wisdom many of the things that we call prophecy is prophecy yes but what was uttered is the wisdom of god go and bath seven times go and bath seven times it is the solution not to all problems to your problem meaning someone else will do it not directed by god and not get any solution you see that the spirit of wisdom is god's customized solution for your challenges it's not generic it's personal that's why i said it is not it is not the wisdom of the world the wisdom of the world is is universal in application like you say if someone is hungry eat god can tell you if you are hungry dance now that does not make sense but that is his solution for you go and bath seven times and the guy felt insulted Abba, i'm a captain of the syrian army and he went to bath the seventh time the bible says his skin became fresh you see let me tell you this is the mystery behind people doing what does not make sense and still getting results they are not making sense is that they are doing it as directed the spirit of wisdom came whatever he tells you to do do it this is the fountain of wisdom mary knew she did they would have said ah, ah jesus look 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 the the person who sells this wine is here he can tell you jews were not foolish people they knew how to crush wine for kings whatever he tells you do notice that no single miracle of jesus was repeated twice 
the results were repeated many times but the manifestation of wisdom brought a unique solution for every issue at a certain time he spat on the ground and put in someone's eyes at a certain time he did something else look at him but we keep repeating the same thing and we just faith comes by hearing hearing what the wisdom of god when his wisdom comes to you then you get up and do what he told you to do then your life becomes a wonder lord where are we going to get the venue for this meeting i saw in my visions overflow lord i can't active your venue. i can use my brain to look at several venues which venue in zaria will contain the crowds you are showing me just keep praying cgc the spirit of wisdom see that as at the time the lord spoke the building had not even been expanded this when the spirit of wisdom speaks don't doubt you can walk on water and every other person who is walking sings except you because the spirit of wisdom is the dimension of the holy spirit that will ensure that what you see this is what makes the life of certain people look miraculous you are doing the same thing but they come and do it and get strange results because they don't do it as desired they wait faith waits until wisdom speaks you don't just act carelessly just because you know no. wisdom is manifested in prayer when we pray the spirit of wisdom begins to speak learn this most of us we are so distracted in our prayer that we do not hear the communications of the spirit of wisdom lord what is the way out to this predicament and challenge in my life and the lord says pray and we pray after five minutes we say god you are not speaking please good night and we just we cheat ourselves there you don't pray as long as you want you pray till the answer comes it's not the issue of 10 minutes or one hour it is when it comes there is an object to your prayer and you begin to pray when 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 cgc became full and the overflows became full it was obvious that when there was a program here there was no other venue that could take us lord what is going to be the way out of this when you know this you know that there's nothing called impossible impossible is the name given to the state before the arrival of the wisdom of god when the wisdom of god comes it will turn a mountain i tell you into a level plain ground is god speaking to you hmm. And all of a sudden, I was praying one time. And the Lord said, because of this, every time Friday night is not available, Sunday night will be available. As simple as it is, that ended the issue of trying to look for all of these things. Lord, the overflows are full now to the roadside. What do we do next? By his wisdom, God was able to profess solution. And we're able to host people. Overflow 3 is bigger than overflow 1, 2, and three and i mean overflow one and two together the wisdom of god you see you never see how it would have happened until wisdom creates the way then you look and say ah, why didn't i think about it because your small brain cannot think about it my brother you need the wisdom of god joseph after he finished interpreting the dream then the spirit of wisdom came hear the spirit of wisdom speaking let pharaoh find a man who is discreet and wise and appoint him over this and that when there was problem and the people were arguing and it was almost killing moses moses could not do his work because there were so many people and god told him mr man you are going to kill yourself let the spirit of wisdom guide you set men thousands and hundreds and fifties and then appoint elders to take care of them then you just play supervisory roles ah, and Moses found rest he would have died and said it's the will of God how many pastors die because they love God but there is no manifestation of the spirit of wisdom to guide the affairs 
by the grace of God, one of the principles that help in my being efficient in ministry is the fact that by his wisdom, we have created a robust leadership structure that allows me to focus on the ministry of word and prayer. I don't have to come here in the afternoon to check to say, ah, I hope these people did their duty. Through wisdom, a house is built. Is God speaking to us? Everybody say prayer. prayer. Shout it, prayer. That means if the devil attacks your prayer life, what is he attacking? He's attacking the arrival of a scriptural solution that brings testimonies for you. When you set yourself apart to pray and the devil said it does not matter, among other things, he's robbing you of access to the wisdom of God. Say, I will pray. Shout it, say, I will pray. Men who pray, access the wisdom of God they come up from their prayer life with very strange solutions very very strange solutions sometimes solutions that don't make sense do not do not downplay on a leader that knows how to get wisdom through prayer when you say we have come to our wit's end then you see another dimension of grace and wisdom number two how is wisdom activated Wisdom is activated through meditation. Meditation. Noisy people, sorry for you. This is where the devil cheats us. We live in a noisy society. If you are not making noise, your phone is making noise. If your phone is not making noise, the television is making noise. If the television is not making noise, the well-wishers around your house are making noise. Our lives are full of noise that cheats us. There is a dimension of wisdom that only silence can bring. Meditation. Great leaders meditate. You sit down. Thank you. There's got to be a way out. Thank you, Holy Spirit. And you sit quietly. Do you know sometimes I do this from morning till night. Meditating like a fool. Sometimes I just kneel down in front of my chair and put my head down. I'm waiting waiting and the answer will never come till sometimes late in the night the spirit of wisdom comes majestically doesn't come in a rush and foolishly and carelessly if you don't have patience forget about it because you will not come sometimes you finish all of those things you are praying in the night you just wake up to stretch a little and fire falls from heaven and you sit down this is it this is it It will break every chain, break every chain, break every chain. It will break every chain, break every chain, break every chain. Is the wisdom of God working in your life? Oh, I fell down the other day when you said receive wisdom. Do you meditate? No, sir. Then the spirit of wisdom may be there, but you're not aligning sufficiently. That's why many men of God don't have messages to preach because they write a list of messages and preach one by one and they finish the 35th one and the year is not even up to half. The year is not halfway gone. And you wonder, what do I do? Inspiration comes in the place of meditation. Never forget. What does it mean to meditate? To ponder. Ponder. Not just on anything. To ponder on truth. Ponder on the word of God. Not just to mutter, but to ponder, to think. It's called imagination. It's not like imagination. It is called imagination. The creation of images by the spirit. Ah. Genesis 11. Before Nimrod began to build, he called the people and they began to meditate. Meditation is not just sitting down under a tree. That's a wonderful, um, um, what they call it, a wonderful way of stimulating meditation. But meditation is where your mind is called to a point where it is stimulated to begin to create. Creativity is a product of meditation. Let me tell you how the spirit of wisdom works. The spirit of wisdom is a creative spirit. It's the first dimension of the Holy Spirit we see in Genesis chapter 1 creation the spirit of wisdom creates it creates solutions 
See, what I'm teaching you is, is, is a jackpot to your success in life if you understand it. Creation. The solution to every problem you seek already exists in Christ. But there is a system of transporting it from the realm of the spirit. It is called creation. It is called the power of imagination. Where you give the Holy Spirit your mind like a woman's womb and you allow him to brood upon it. That's what happens in meditation. You offer like a wife gives her womb over to her husband to be implanted with a seed. That's what happens. Many of us are not creators. Creation is not just by speaking. It is out of the abundance of the heart. When that incubation has happened, then your speaking is among the process that makes it manifest. Not many people will teach you this thing I'm teaching you. The spirit of wisdom will make your life a wonder if you know how it works. Watch Jesus. This woman was caught in adultery. The very act of it. This is a kind of question where both yes and no would chain you. And Jesus kept quiet and was writing the spirit of wisdom. Immediately the spirit of wisdom landed. Then he spoke. He who does not have sin should cast the first stone. And then the Bible says his speech affected the oldest first. You see, you see how powerful wisdom is? Because the youngest can drop it and the oldest will say, are you, are you stupid? Pick that stone. Then he started with the oldest. If the oldest has dropped the stone, what do you do as the youngest? The miracle is not in dropping the stone. It's who dropped it first. The oldest dropped it down to the last person. Woman, where are your accusers? Go. Neither do I condemn you. This is the spirit of wisdom. It is the spirit of wisdom that suggested the strategy for the salvation of men. Mm. That instead of everybody dying, let's make a caricature out of Satan. It's called the hidden wisdom. Let one man come and let the whole world enter in him. Then let him die. So that one man came and Satan kept looking for him. At a point, the Holy Ghost restrained his hand and Satan began to prevail. And Satan manipulated men to kill Jesus. And he ran to hell. He said, demons, did you watch what happened? I can't believe it. I killed Jesus. And to his shock, he saw Jesus in hell. And he said, no, this is a joke. You can't be in hell. Say, yes, I'm here. Because when you kill sinners, they go to hell. And so I died sin. And here I am in hell. Give me the keys. <sighs> Give me the keys. Give me the keys. Give me the keys. And when the keys were given to him, he dislodged principalities and powers, made a public show of them. And then he not only resurrected, he resurrected with many who had died. They were in the streets of Jerusalem. Everybody saw him. And he said, guys, this is it. You will, um, you will go to heaven, but I have to be the firstborn among the resurrected. So let me go to heaven quickly. I'll come back and then you guys will go. And he went to heaven poured his blood according to Hebrews in the tabernacle, became the high priest and then he returned. The guys went and he went to the disciples. All hail and back. All power in heaven. He disarmed Satan not through power, through wisdom. Are we together? Listen, let me teach you something. I walk in the anointing. Many results are not dependent on power, force, wisdom. Is really what brings dominion because the realm of the spirit is a legal realm you engage through knowledge not just by trying to force things It's the ministry of the angels to do that they are the enforcers of the Word of God they confirm the word of the servant but wisdom is solution that's why sometimes you see me ministering to people and you see me doing stupid things. I can hold somebody's hand and the Holy Spirit can say, let that person shout Jesus. And the person just shout Jesus and then the person is falling. And you are watching, me too, I'm watching. I'm as shocked as you. We are all watching the wisdom of the Spirit. You will now 
get the formula and run to one small meeting and hold somebody's hand and tell the person to shout Jesus and the person shouts and looks at you say I've done it say do it again because it was just copying this is one of the big mistake of we young ministers we copy acts without the spirit that brought them are we together yes meditation this is where many of us have missed it that you sit before the lord what's that song brooding over every darkness you are called listen light to shine from dark how can light come out of darkness that's what the bible said he said god who has commanded light to come out of darkness that means the answer is right there with you in your chaos the light the raw material sit down in that situation and meditate and let creation begin to happen when you plant corn the ugliness of the soil and it is still where the new shoot comes out of it's a principle he's brooding over every darkness you are causing light to shine in darkness you are brooding over all my darkness you are causing light to shine from darkness so in the midst of that financial hardship sit down there that's when creation happens you're not going to run away from the challenge and get a solution somewhere sit in it by the rivers of babylon in the midst of the captivity i sat down there and a vision was open to me we run away from challenges the miracle is right there sit down there's got to be a way lord my wife no i prayed on there's got to be a way and all of a sudden you allow him to impregnate your mind ha. brothers and sisters i can tell you this your life will be a wonder first to you if you practice this it will be as if you are holding a charm or a genie somewhere that you are winding many of us don't sit down jobless people don't sit down to allow creation happen they just loiter around sir can you give me a job and god is saying i want to speak to you no oh god I'm, I'm, i mean I'm, I'm, i want to marry they said I, I can't marry because i don't have a job me i want to and god says, sit down now if we can take half the time we spend loitering around to sit down not worrying just find the back of one tree in the night and sit down when other people are snoring their destinies you sit quietly there's got to be a way to my life lord everything is not working nine prayer requests since last year nine of them not answered you are not a liar jesus speak to me and you are just playing you know i told i get who did i give an assignment was it us or oh, school of ministry students no sometimes i don't know the difference but do it still do it go and play worship you don't just sit down and beds are just making noise worship doesn't distract you it steals your spirit and then you sit down sometimes for hours the flesh will never allow you sit down this flesh you see once you sit down you just start thinking ah oh, but that lady is really beautiful you see don't stop still sit down there okay, but my father do you know to be honest do you know that i didn't have a good upbringing don't worry this is the flesh trying to distract something a time will come your flesh will be frustrated it will give up it's one of the benefits of fasting the flesh is empowered by the health of your body it takes advantage of food so when when food is minimal it it alters the interruption of the flesh yes sir it does ultimately leading to boosting your faith but that's how it works and you sit down lord there has to be a way and the lord sits down and says but you know you have hundred thousand and then a scripture just opens up and now this is god the spirit of wisdom coming to you now and looks at it and says except a corn falls in the ground and the lord can speak to you and say that hundred thousand that is your last money i'm not saying do it 
go and sow it you are not doing donation just thinking about it and you carry yourself as if you are going to go and die and sow it somewhere the moment you do that the same spirit that spoke to you now goes to your uncle who doesn't like you and say remember i've been telling you you will bless somebody it's time now it's janet it's this person and then your uncle calls you wisdom justified by her children and you are surprised and god says keep trusting me like this for your life and then you sit down and you find out let me tell you how god forces the spirit of wisdom to work in you sometimes he will close the door of any physical helper in your life pain is a very good way of activating wisdom some of us until you go through certain levels of pain wisdom will never work in your life it's not all pain that is demonic hear what i'm telling you you always receive hundred hundred thousand from your father so every time they are saying the wisdom of god you say yes but what you are mean is the money is coming and then your father says well um i had a dream and i didn't see myself giving you money for five months so what are you saying say exactly that um a voice spoke to me and that's the voice that has been speaking to me that i got rich that you are benefiting from the same voice said i should leave you alone you may insult and get angry but after two weeks you sit down and in your anger you frown you frown you frown and then you just open a scripture anyhow lord help me and then you just see takes you to the story of the widow in zarephath what did she do you have been reading it because your stomach is full now you read it with your stomach empty then shall thy light break forth and you see something you never saw ah god commanded a woman but she was not aware she was commanded but the bible says god already commanded her could it, could it be that there was something she was not receiving? Because God told Elijah, I've commanded her. Whether she, the, the message arrived to her or not, is another thing. But me, I've commanded her. But when Elijah arrived, it didn't look like she was aware. I expect her to say, oh, you are the one. You're welcome. Come in. I mean, the loaf is there. The man said, I'm about to die. She would have died not hearing the command or seeing the prophet. The same way God will say, I've answered this person. And you look at the person's life and the answer is not yet there. I meditate a lot. Creation happens in my life through meditation. I have explored the power of imagination. This is not some zodiac, Scientology, metaphysical thing. This is a principle. Listen to the advice that God gave Joshua. Chapter 1 and verse 8. Let's attempt to round up he said this book of the law please give it to us shall not depart from out of your mouth but thou shall meditate i thought i was do you know i literally was seeing it <laughs> truly speaking <laughs> you guys are delaying okay this book of the law shall not depart from out of thy mouth listen but thou shall meditate therein meditate therein not meditate any other place you don't meditate on what you want you meditate on the word of god not just look at a newspaper and say hi again Boko Haram. and you are looking and you are thinking about a solution for your church it won't come that way are we together thou shalt meditate there in day and night when you meditate and information will come from it then you observe to do and then your way becomes prosperous you don't act first you sit down and allow the creative force of god's wisdom come to your life lord my wedding is five months all we have is hundred thousand the budget is 2.5 there's got to be a way out not hi god you sent me mm, jesus talk to me my spirit is open i silence every voice of fear silence them first i silence every wicked voice that wants to make god look unfaithful in my life lord you are faithful and you are sitting down and the spirit of wisdom begins to move the spirit of wisdom can tell you to do anything he can just say call one person and you call the person 
and he says, I'm going to do a transfer. You will think it's 100,000. You will see 3 million. And God says, now it has come. Go and marry your wife. And other people will see you and say, you that I know. Abba, my brother. And you, you will quietly go back and give God glory. Ah, God, wisdom has covered for me. That's why you see some people whose testimony should be like your own. Based on the physical parameters you see, but their testimonies are a thousand times greater than yours. Wisdom bail them out. Someone needs to receive this wisdom tonight. Because the depending on men forever, let God send them. Remember I told you all blessings come from God through men to you. But when you begin to depend on men, depending on men is addictive. It's addictive. Those men can even be your father and your mother. Many of us who have all this right conscious mentality. My father, you are the one that gave birth to me. You are 40 years, you are still saying it. And God may not cause what is happening in your family, but you will see it as a ready tool and push you out. And then you sit down. And then you worry and call it meditation. And God says, no. Worrying, I've stopped you from doing that. But you sit down and you meditate. Let me admit to you that you will not meditate one night and get the solution. No. I wish it were so. Sometimes it can happen. But that's just God's mercy helping you to encourage you so that the day that it doesn't come with the speed you want, you will know God has been faithful. And you will stay. There are people who stay for weeks weeks turn to months every multi-millionaire knows this thing i'm telling you that their result is not just based on what they do but based on the reality that has been altered in their minds and their perceptions it is true way before god blessed this ministry with these crowds i had captured it it's there do you believe what i've taught you tonight my, my prayer for you is not just that you finish a service today and say wow nice <clears throat> but that you go and sit down and say Lord I know I'm a prayer warrior but there is no time in silence to sit quietly wake up in the night and think Lord what is the next key what is the next step there are bills before me what is the next step this is the dimension we must step into as a ministry there has to be a way out don't say there is no way don't join satan saying there is no way is calling god a liar you open scripture no there is a way ah. light me lord light me lord light me lord like a candle light me lord light me lord Light me, Lord, like a candle. Light me, Lord. Light me, Lord. Light me, Lord. Like a candle. Light me, Lord. Light me, Lord. Light me, Lord. Like a candle. Light me, Lord. Light me, Lord. Light my light. have taught you is the secret for the hand of God upon your life financially you will sit down and do business after business and business after business and be shocked that the result will be the same because out of the abundance of the heart what have you incubated in your spirit and your mind it's not about doing things you tell people these things they never listen because most people think men of God know nothing about finances and people run around looking for all kinds of give me money let me do this and God says one thing is needful settle down first apostle what do you think I can do to prosper sit down no I, my, blood, my blood is hot calm down and one the breath of the spirit will just light that bulb and you stand up circumspectly and with little effort the lord will create a wonder out of your life hear what i'm saying write the challenges let me give you an assignment go and write out all the challenges that you are trusting god for and sit with a clean sheet of paper in your bible and worship and just keep looking at them 
let me teach you this in conclusion. Can I, can I, am I free to teach you? Look at me. <laughs> Pray in tongues for one minute. Pray in tongues for one minute. Labaka sude bilahasiana kataboshi. Light me, Lord. Light me, Lord. Light me, Lord. Like a candle. Light me, Lord. Light me, Lord. Light me, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let me teach you something. Jesus was teaching. And he said, the eye is the light of the body. Listen carefully. Please, please listen. The eye is the light of the body. Do you know what Jesus was saying? I hope you know Jesus was not teaching a parable. Go and Google the parables of Jesus. You don't see that story as a parable. He was giving something. He was teaching a powerful principle. That the eye, these two objects you see in front of your face that there is a mystery seeing is only one of the functions and it's simply because that's all science told you there is a system of transporting realities to and from the realm of the spirit that only your eyes that's why god healed every blind person he saw there was no blind person that passed jesus that was not healed there were other cripples that he left them but he was violent on blindness there is a relationship between your eyes and your destiny listen paul became blinded by the glory of god but god had to open his spiritual eyes to be seen first before the physical one opened do you know why your eye closes in the night when you sleep light me lord light my life light my destiny brothers and sisters there are secrets in this book when you find it your results are not just an issue of wish these eyes you see let me tell you what happens anything the eye makes contact with consistently the mind The mind, listen to me carefully. What your eyes makes contact with, it forces your mind to begin to think on that reality. Now watch this. It is not the thinking about it. It is an incubation that starts happening in the realm of the spirit. Now, the Holy Ghost knows the solution. Are we together now? You meditate not just by closing your eyes alone because sometimes you close the physical eyes but you are still seeing are we together now and so that's the reason why you pray well in the night because there are few distractions your eye is seeing but you just see black and white this color sometimes can create noise it is an enemy to meditation are we together Go and close a room and sit quietly and play worship and see what happens to you. Where you are not seeing the speaker, Nepa took light and you are using your phone to worship and you pray they don't bring light because it's doing something to you. This eye is a transmitter. The same way you have a radio wave. Watch this. Not just your ears. This eye, the creation of a radio wave is in the similitude of the way God designed men to walk that you lift an antenna and it starts receiving the before you the goal is to get that sound to your radio is that true but you lift up something that something is your eyes that when you begin to make contact with the word of god i don't mean reading it just looking open down my eyes that i may behold wondrous things what did David know? So, you are making contact and all of a sudden, let me tell you what will happen. Very soon, 
your eyes will stop seeing. You are looking, but you are no longer seeing. Your mind is what takes over. Have you seen that happen? That you are reading something and for hours you keep reading the same line. You can't move forward. That's because something more superior than your reading is distracting you. In that case, worrying. The eyes. Then your ears. These things are gates. I'm showing you. Notice that you have a selection of songs in your phone or whatever. You never sit down particularly to hear them. But after hearing them five or six times, you know the next song. And you can sing along. If they ask you to sing it on your own now, you can't sing. But once they play it, you can follow it and sing. These are systems. The eyes is a very deep and dangerous mystery. Yes. He told the man at Gate Beautiful, look at us. Use your eyes. I'm about to talk to you. I thought you said, give me your ears. He said, look at us steadfastly. And he looked at them and he said, now you are seeing. What was the requirement of Elijah receiving from Elijah? Not if you can hear me. If you can, was he not looking at him? This is your Bible. I'm not reading an occult book. This is your Bible. When Jesus was, le was levitating to heaven, the Bible says they kept looking at him. Their eyes stayed on him. Until the cloud received him. And something happened to them. Could it be that the only thing you have been doing with your eyes is to just look around? No. That's why you don't remember the faces of blind people. Because you cannot see their eyes. The, the, the part that makes your face recognizable is your eyes. Let's pray. Light me, Lord, light me, Lord, light me, Lord, like a candle, light me, Lord, light me, Lord, light me, Lord, like a candle, light me, Lord, light me, Lord, light my life. says therefore get wisdom the bible says doth not wisdom cry it personifies wisdom that wisdom is calling on people and say please don't attempt to live without me when the lord was creating the heavens and the earth the spirit of wisdom was there your life cannot be created without it the manifestation of the spirit of wisdom is what is responsible for delivering the secrets of the kingdom. Without wisdom, revelation is not even possible. The spirit of wisdom will grant you access to scriptural solutions. Brothers and sisters, you will watch mountains before you crash. And people look at you and say, what wisdom is this? There is a relationship between mighty works and wisdom. Every time you see mighty works, strange results at the back of it is a scriptural solution. It's a mystery that was unveiled. When the spirit of wisdom comes upon you, then all other manifestations of the spirit can be made possible. Without it, you are just joking around. I saw this in my life. I craved for the spirit of wisdom. I pursued it with my life and my all. The day the spirit of wisdom came upon me, I knew. I have been studying the Bible. But brothers and sisters, when the spirit of wisdom comes, your results change immediately in a strange way. The speakings of the spirit. We need this for our families. Could this be why your ministry has been grounded? Could this be why our families never rise to certain extent? We think the thing is just about more money or more this or more that. No, please help them. We are going to spend two or three minutes crying out in the spirit and say, Lord, a baptism. I'm tired 
of no results in my life. I'm tired of foolish decisions in my life. Pray. Pray and let the spirit of wisdom come upon you. Never stranded of solutions. Never stranded of solutions. There is always something to do. There is some, always a way of moving forward. Pray. Shake it, take it, take it, take it. Everything that has bread. Everything that has bread. Everything that has bread. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Say after me in the name of Jesus. Say it again in the name of Jesus. I receive a baptism of the spirit of wisdom. I receive the grace to manifest supernatural solutions over every challenge of my life. Lift your voice and pray. There is an answer. There has to be an answer. There is an answer. There is an answer. I can't be stranded forever. There is an answer. Hidden in the spirit of wisdom is an answer. A strange answer. Lord, there is an answer to my financial predicament. There is an answer to the challenge in my life. That you have not seen it and you have not received it does not mean it is not there. There has to be an answer to the challenges in my family. Hallelujah. Say in the name of Jesus. I receive a strategy say it in the name of Jesus I receive the strategy out of confusion out of pain out of tragedy lift your voice and begin to pray there has to be a strategy he made his ways known to Moses by the spirit of wisdom there has to be a way. I cannot beg forever. There is a way to the anointing. There is a way to my ministry rising. There is a way. There is a way. There has to be a way. I receive. I receive. Divine strategies. Illumination. You move mountains, you cause walls to fall with your power. You perform miracles, there is nothing that's impossible. And I'm standing here only because you move mountains. Listen, 
Let me give us one more prayer. By the grace of God, we are a people of prayer. Most of the churches and the body of believers within this region are a people who have received the spirit of prayer and supplication. But we lack the grace for creativity. We lack the grace for imagination. The breath of the spirit upon your mind. I like you to pray and say, Lord, grant me the grace to meditate. The grace to bet solutions from the realm of the spirit. The grace to use my mind to allow the Holy Ghost spirit upon my mind. Are you praying? God gave you a mind to bring victory to your life. He gave you a mind not just to watch things happen. Believe me, the solution is locked up within you. Allow the Holy Spirit to begin his work of creation. The answer will come. Pray. Baptize my mind. Baptize my mind. There is an answer locked up by the Holy Ghost. My mind can produce supernatural solutions. Hallelujah. Listen. The worst, the worst condition of a man is madness. In my opinion, the worst condition of a man is madness. Where the devil has hijacked your capacity to create. This is how companies come into being. This is how churches increase and expand. This is how business corporations rise. This is how individuals rise. They can stay with the Holy Ghost and say there's got to be a way. And they stay there and stay there until something comes from heaven. And they run with it and the vision speaks in the end. And their lives look miraculous. There is no mystery behind it. It's the sacrifice of meditation. Every religion, every sect, agrees on this one thing that meditation brings creation hallelujah lord may my mind be a channel for strategies to come from heaven lift your voice and pray may my mind be a channel you didn't give me a mind just to gossip and loiter around stop all this moving up and down and sit down Sit down with the Holy Ghost. Sit down. Let him breathe upon your eyes. Let him breathe upon your ears. Let him breathe upon your mind. And my brother, my sister, your life will change in a way that will surprise you. It's a guarantee that I give you. The hidden wisdom that the princes did not know. Hallelujah. The Bible says, For as he thinketh in his heart, so is he. So God used that strategy and slew the lamb from the foundations of the earth. So there was no problem to it manifesting because it had been a reality. The plan of salvation. Go to come, let us build a city. It is a carry blocks. He said, Sit down. Let's build a city. And they gave access to demon spirits to begin to brood on their creativity. They saw it happening. And the Bible says in chapter 11 from verse 5 that God came down. They had not started building. But the Bible says God came down to see the city which the son of man had built. It. They had finished it. If you don't believe what I'm saying, you will never do anything great. This is it. The spirit of God. With the raw material of your mind. Not business. Not job. Stay with him. Finish that work with him. That's why there is nobody who cannot rise. Your little one room. With roaches around. No problem. 
use it as the place like the cave of Adullam. Start from there. It's unfortunate when you rise without knowing what you did because there is then no way you teach people. He said, that which we have seen, that which we have heard, that which our hands have handled. Listen, you see, this is what makes you confident in your results. You know how they came and you know what to keep doing. That's why you see ministries after 45 years still standing. The people are not fools. When you see great men like our father, Bishop Oedipo, and, and um, Papa uh, um, 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 Adeboe, you see all of them talk, you think they are arrogant. They are not fools. That's why Bill Gates remains the wealthiest man. That's why all of these people come. They replace him for a moment. Today he gets back again. And all of them keep recycling among their circle. It never goes anywhere. Because they know. They have lost the ability to allow any other thing incubate negativism. It's the mystery behind the wealthy getting wealthier and the poor getting wealthier, poorer. Because all they see keeps making sure they remain there. The only thing they make the contact with and hear are things that keep reprogramming. Like you have water cycle, you have nitrogen cycle, you have poverty cycle, you have wealth cycle, where things reinforce themselves again. When I started working in the anointing, my eyes did not see so much results. So sometimes you need to push through. But because I have made contacts with the result, it has created a cycle. You see that? So you are not trying to get the power of God to move. Your mind has been indoctrinated. It has become a stronghold that the power of God can move. So the Holy Spirit comes through your mind like neuropaths will teach us in neurology that every time you think the brain can create pathways to repeat those thoughts again. That's what happens to you. Lift your hands. Our time is gone. But I truly, truly want God to do much in your life this year. He declared that it's a year of signs and wonders. We are starting the seven days of fasting. Please don't miss it. Every night I'm going to be bringing mystery upon mystery and we're going to be praying that these things will push our lives forcefully to dimensions you never dreamt possible. I stretch my hands towards you and I declare in the name of Jesus Christ, the son of the living God, may the spirit of wisdom, not just the gift of wisdom, the spirit, the manifestation of the Holy Spirit that brings strategies to you, I release that dimension in your life in the name of Jesus Christ. Please help me. In the name of Jesus Christ. I decree and declare inside overflow one, two, three, those following online. From tonight, begin to birth creative solutions. In the name of Jesus. By this impartation, I declare that every mountain that stands before you on its encounter with the spirit of wisdom may it become a level playing ground in the name of Jesus please keep standing there are people here who need to hand over their lives to Christ Jesus Christ is the factor please keep standing let's honor those coming out now Jesus Christ is the reason and the only reason why the things we are teaching works he is the power behind creation he is the power behind prayer he is the power behind this knowledge are we together he said ye must be born again there are people scattered across this auditorium and around in the various overflows who are saying man of God I have been so blessed tonight but truly I have not handed my life over to Jesus or there are people who are saying man of God I need to make my ways right with God. I have, I remember coming out to make an altar call. But as it is right now, I know that I've derailed from the part of the spirit and I want to be restored. Wherever you are, we have two minutes for you. Overflow three, you can walk to your projector stand outside. Overflow three, you can just walk to the front of your projector stand. Overflow one and two and those inside, please make your way quickly. You are making this decision. If you are outside, please run. Our time is gone. I want to lead you to Jesus. God bless you. You are inside this auditorium. Make your way to the front. God bless you, young man. God bless you. Koinonia, appreciate them. They are coming.
make your way keep coming i know the thoughts that i think towards you said the lord they are thoughts of good and not of peace and not of evil to bring you a future and an expected end overflow one and two quickly please let them rush if you're coming quickly 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 thank you jesus let the lord come and change your life don't sit down when you know that your way is not right with god no one will force you but i want you to make that decision for the sake of your destiny thank you jesus overflow three just walk to the front of your projector stand if you're coming out quickly 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 join them man of god i don't know if i'm saved or not join them join them quickly join them quickly join them quickly god bless you hallelujah join them quickly now i want to lead you she's coming please hurry up hurry up quickly hurry up quickly come stand now thank you so much for this great decision i want you to lift your right hand and say this after me passionately you're not reciting a poem say lord jesus i believe in you that you are the son of god that you died for me join them yes. tonight i hand my life over to you be my lord be my savior i receive your life into my spirit and i declare that from tonight until forever i belong to you amen keep your hands lifted jesus help them may your spirit that we have so much talked about and acknowledged even tonight rest upon them and in the name of jesus christ may they rise from glory to glory give them a new experience lord i pray that you authenticate their prayers by granting them access to the spirit of truth i pray that your grace will keep them in the name of jesus christ may the lord bless you in the name of jesus christ hallelujah god bless you thank you so much god bless you please return okay follow um the gentleman waving his hands all of you they'll take you outside and um you'll be back now please just to announce to us that um dearly beloved i hope you were blessed by this message do not keep the video to yourself share to as many as you can to help them bless check our home page for more of our messages subscribe to the channel comment on it like it see you on our next video bye pray 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 for your destiny the phase of development lord grant me the discipline